Get yourself together, Mark. Get yourself together. Give me a second, people. I'm trying to trying to get this together because this is a major loss. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do without it. Hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This is really and truly hard to talk about right now. When you've lost something that is so important in your life, something that's crucial to your being, something that you literally wake up to and look forward to, you question if you can go on. And that's where I am right now. And... I have lost something that's near and dear to me that I feel an emptiness inside right now. And I'm sure a lot of you are feeling the same way. I have lost hope and I've lost faith in the Joneses to make this team into a winner. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I don't know how else to put it. I have had faith in the Cowboys. I've had belief in the Cowboys. You all know I have talked about my faith in the Cowboys, my belief in them, my trusting of the process, giving time, turning a blind eye to things that I knew weren't right. I have finally lost that hope in this team, which is something that has been part of my life all of my life. Don't get it wrong. I'm a sucker. I'm a glutton for abuse. That's the way it is when you're a Cowboy fan. You know, I always hear people screaming about being a bandwagon fan. You're just a bandwagon fan. Bro. Bandwagon? No. I'm going to say, if you out there right now are claiming to be a Dallas Cowboy fan, by definition, you cannot be a Cowboys fan and a bandwagon fan. Bro, that bandwagon went out with the covered wagons. There ain't good shit to cheer about. We've tried. We look fashionable. We used to sell the top 10 in jersey sales. We don't even have that anymore. We got an owner and his son that literally will lie to your face. Who will literally piss on your head and tell you it's raining. 
who literally takes notes, well, not really notes, has a notepad, but just doodles, just doodles. And I finally have accepted the loss of my belief in winter Super Bowls. Until something drastic changes in how they go about business, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna happen. And I can no longer get my hopes for that. The best I can hope for we get a win here and a win there and enjoy that week. For me, like I said, bandwagon. The last time we won a Super Bowl, God, I didn't have gray hair. I was recovering from a streptococcus A infection in my knee. My son was six years old and my daughter, who's got not one but two channels that she's got a YouTube play button for, was four years old. Bandwagon. <laughs> You're just a bandwagon fan. Girl, there ain't no bandwagon. And for those out there that are opining for the Cowboys to blow it up and start all over, to trade away players so we can win through the draft and start over, are we talking about the guys who traded Amari Cooper for a fifth round pick who was traded a couple years later for a third? Are we talking about the guys who traded for Trey Lance with a fourth round pick with a team who did not want to trade with you? But your offer was so out of kilter paying more than anybody was close to they're like, we don't want to play the team with the Cowboys, but damn. Everybody else offering a seventh or a six. They're offering a four. Are we to think that the guys that have drafted Taco Charlton, Tristan Hill, Boss Man Fat, Luke Schoonmaker, Bruce Carters, that those guys can make trades and draft a team that's going to get us to the Super Bowl? Do we believe that the guys who said, hey, let's pay our quarterback to win us the Super Bowl? and then say he can win it with just one receiver? Yeah, it's hard to have faith and belief that you can do something when your team's management company is so inept that they literally have had the same problem over and over and over again. And they still do the same things over and over again. Thinking they're going to get a different result. So yes, I'm sad. I've accepted that. But what really is going to kill me is tomorrow is Wednesday. And Wednesday, now, if you're going to talk the talk, you're going to walk the walk. And you can't be a fair weather cockroach. I can't call out San Francisco fans that didn't show up all week, that then show up when they're winning. 
and call them a cockroach and then hide myself. I have to go in there and be a man, knowing what I'm facing. I'm a dead man walking, going on the Dan Salido show tomorrow. Billy 500 and Dan, Dan who said, <laughs> the Cowboys are a five-win team. Shit. At the moment, he looks like Notre Dame. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. I'm sitting here <laughs> for a team that has so much, so much opulence. You've got AT&T Stadium, even though it's been open for 15 years. It's still one of the premier places to go to watch a game. They have the twin clubs on each side. They have the Italian marble. They've got the light fixtures that are shapes of football. They've got, what, 4,000 TVs throughout. The only place that there's not a TV to watch the Cowboys is in the elevators. That even if you get arrested or put in a holding cell, there's a TV in there for you. There's so many things to do there besides watch football. They have the star with, of course, all the tours. Where the practice field is surrounded on three sides by office buildings, including Keurig Pepsi, I mean Keurig Dr. Pepper, the corporate headquarters, that overlooks at the players practicing on the field. That the Cowboys go to training camp in Oxnard, and it's like feeding time at the zoo. We're all there every day getting autographs. That is if you pay. That is if you pay. <clears throat> but watching the team play practice, putting out content, spreading the Dallas Cowboys brand. Selling hope for players that may not even make the roster. Yeah. It sucks right now. Being a Dallas Cowboy fan. Knowing that you have no hope and no faith in the front office. I know I will not sleep tonight. My head is pounding. I'm tired as can be. Knowing what I gotta face. Thank you very much, Jerry and Stephen Jones. I appreciate that. I hope all the money that you guys make is worth it to put all of us through agony. Well, I do have good news. I still have all you guys there. And as they say, misery loves company. I'm gonna ask you guys, Painless, painless savage. Great fan. Met her last year in her tailgate. Has not been in a lot lately. Her granddaughter had nine years old. Um, has developed, has developed a brain cancer, a rare form of it. And she's been spending all of her time learning everything that she can about it. She's having the last few days of chemo, and they hope that she's going to be able to come home. So please keep Pamela Savage in her in your prayers. And um, 
remember. Tell the people you love how much you love them. Because you might not get the chance again, guys. And I truly love you guys. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, God. Not the Dan Salio show. Not the Dan Salio show. Peace.